basically years years of observing fish and fishing for trout and grayling. I've, I've watched fish in clear water so many times, coarse fish. If you're fishing upstream, they just do not move off station. A fly will just, it can trundle past them as slowly as it likes and they just do not move for it. But if that same fly is in front of them and just twitching fractionally away upstream, they'll suddenly chase after it and take. And you could cover a huge shoal of roach or dace in moving water with nymph after nymph casting upstream and you'll catch nothing. Change that round to dangle downstream and get it in their face and you can sometimes milk 20 or 30 fish in a session. Just from that one spot. It's, the difference is astronomical. But you want your flies to actually almost hover on the bottom. You don't want them nailed to it. If they're nailed down, there's no life. They've got to almost just want them to get down. So sometimes that means finding the sweet spot in a pool where if you, if you cast into the, the faster water and then move your rod tip slightly to the side so it just makes your flies drift into slightly slower water and then you envisage your flies almost settling. That's usually where you'll get your take. It's more positioning the tip of your rod, which is why a long rod is so helpful. So any stretch of water like this, you've got all your micro flows in it. If you've got a slightly slower area where you think, hey, there could be a fish over there, it's so simply a case, get your rod tip upstream from that. Allow your line to just come to dangle down below. And once you're then in that slightly slacker or tastier water where you think there's a fish, Hold it on the dangle there. Hopefully you've got the right weight on so your flies are just going to hover down to the bottom. Then you can do the tiny twitch back when you're thinking you're fishing correctly. You never know 100% what's going on. And if, but if you're doing it right, you'll twitch back in that zone, bump, and you'll be in. Not happening at the moment here, we're in shallow water.
mean, you're, you're trying to get the fly just about touching the bottom, watching the, the line for it moving forwards. Also, you will feel knocks. If your line goes quite tight, you'll feel knocks through the rod. Generally, you fish very, very slowly, almost stationary. If it's in fastish water like this, almost stationary, and just take another step and just keep covering the water or cast it two or three foot longer. Sometimes if I let it drift into a slack a bit, I'll very slowly twitch back, all the time watching the end of the line for it just to twitch forward and tighten up. semi-automatic Viverelli basically pull, pull the lever to wind in your slack line it stops so many snags when you're fishing well not snags it stops so much line wrap around the end of your rod when you're moving from swim to swim it's invaluable I think for a little river doing this sort of thing it's got a large arbor spool on it from Lucky Burr the line is just one of the modern nymph lines which are 0.6 mil I think diameter um, mono works just as well this rod's a, a, a quiver tip rod from back in about the late 90s but nymph rods work just as well long and light 11 foot 2 3 weight uh, the leader is just mono about 8 10 foot with two flies about four foot apart today. If the river was clearer, they'd be six or seven foot apart. And if it was really coloured, they might even be only 12 inches apart. Two nymphs down the line. Is, uh, I always tend to put the heavier one on the dropper and then the lighter one, which usually catches all the fish, but not today, on the point. And then occasionally, well, I say occasionally, quite often these days, pinch split shot on the line if you've got a faster or deeper or if you feel like you're not getting down to the fish in a spot you want to that's it pretty simple mm -hmm. 